Yes, yeah, so uh, let's start with your academic profile before your master in quantitative finance at MIT. So I, uh, I completed my bachelor's from uh, IIT Bombay. I studied computer science and I graduated in 2018. Uh, after graduating, I actually worked at a hedge fund for uh, one year. And uh, after that, I applied for uh, the MIT m program. Okay, um, impressive. So besides MIT, I'm curious to know which programs did you apply to and why did you choose MIT? I had also applied to uh, Princeton, Columbia and uh, Oxford. And I chose MIT because uh, out of all of these programs, MIT is the best university and the best uh, finance program. Okay, so you applied to Ivy League uh, plus uh, UK Ivy League. Um, okay, so if you could tell us more about the program, so the duration, the specific academic focus, the potential career outcomes, how different is it from the MIT Masters in Business Analytics? Sure. So uh, the MFIN program uh, comes in uh, two ways. So you can, so there's a one year program and there's a 1.5 year program. Uh, so you don't choose which program you go to. You apply for the MFIN program and the program office chooses for you whether you'll be admitted to the one year program or the 1.5 year one. Uh, the academic focus is mostly on uh, uh, they, they have courses on quant finance, they have courses on uh, corporate finance, they have courses related to investment banking. So uh, there is no specific uh, academic focus as such. So uh, it involves a, broad, uh, a lot of broad areas in finance. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can uh, specialize uh, as per your uh, liking, depending on uh, what you are going for. Uh, and the career uh, potential is also very similar to that, depending on uh, where you want to go from, uh, like after graduating, you can choose your courses and you can appropriately apply to uh, companies and such. Uh, you asked me about uh, the business analytics program. I'm not, I, I don't have a firsthand experience of the business analytics program. So I, I, I'm not sure if I can comment on that. Uh, what I do know is the MFIN program, the Master in Finance program is very specific to finance applications and finance applications like hedge funds, like uh, private equity uh, spaces, like consulting, uh, investment banks. So these are the kind of places that people go to after completing the MFIN program. Uh, after uh, business analytics, I'm not entirely sure. I feel that that's more to do with uh, data science roles and such. So there is definitely an overlap, but uh, I would say that if you're interested in finance particularly, then the infant program is better for you. Mm -hmm. And regarding your colleagues, your classmates, um, what did they pursue as education prior to joining the Master in Finance program? So you can uh, find a very diverse group at uh, MIT MFIN. Uh, a lot of people uh, did engineering, a lot of people studied economics, a lot of people studied finance in undergrad. Uh, some people have uh, like two to four years of work experience. Some people have one year of work ex, and a lot of people are fresh out of college. So you can find a very diverse group there, uh, diverse in the sense uh, prior experience as well as uh, diverse in the sense of the kind of countries and backgrounds they're coming from. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much. And it, of it is often perceived that as an Indian, you cannot make it to MIT only if you graduated from an IIT. Please tell us more about the class composition, the diversity and the kind of students the program typically accepts. So we already touched upon the different, you know, uh, degrees slash experience that students have, which is diverse, but maybe um, these students have some very interesting extracurricular activities or maybe they excel in sports or maybe they have some, I mean, uh, special profiles. Could you tell us more about your class? Sure. Uh, so your first question was you mentioned as an Indian. So yes. uh, we were a total of four Indians in uh, our batch of MIT MFIN, out of which two of us were from IIT and mm -hmm. two were not from IIT. So one person, uh, one uh, uh, one of my female uh, colleagues, she was from um, SRC, Shishiram College of Commerce, and somebody else studied in US. 
uh, for undergrad. So, uh, and in fact, uh, the batch before us had a lot of people who were not from IIT. Mm-hmm. So definitely being from uh, IIT or being from a, a good college in undergrad definitely gives you an edge. But uh, I don't think it's a restrictive uh, barrier. Like if you're not from a uh, top college in undergrad, still based on your work experience, based on your uh, extracurriculars, or if there's something extraordinary that you've done, you can definitely uh, vouch for a spot uh, at the infant program. And how big is your class? So, uh, so like I mentioned, there are two variants, the one year and the 1.5 mm-hmm. variant. Yeah. Uh, the one year, uh, so I was from the one year variant and mm-hmm. uh, I think there were around uh, 70, 75 people in my class when I graduated and uh, there were around uh, 40 to 50 people in the 1.5 year uh, variant as far as I remember. Yeah, so as we can see, the MIT Master in Finance is a highly competitive program to get into. Uh, could you tell us more about how did you go about your application? What aspects of your profile you focused on? And eventually, how how was the admissions interview? Sure. So the first thing you wanted to know was uh, about the application. So the application involves, uh, number one, you have to get, uh, you have to write the GRE, you have to write the TOEFL, all the standard uh, stuff. Uh, you need a statement of purpose and you need a couple of uh, letters of recommendation. Mm -hmm. So I compiled all of that. I sent them through. Uh, And uh, if you make it through the first pass, then you're invited for an interview. Uh, And based on, and in the interview contains both an interpersonal discussion as well as a technical section. And based on how you perform in the interview, they uh, choose to give you, give you an offer or not. What? So, Oh, sorry, sorry. I just wanted to guide the the conversation. What kind of questions do they ask during the interview? Is it more behavioral, or do you get technical questions? So the the conversation is behavioral. Definitely, they want to know about uh, the kind of stuff you did uh, in your undergrad, the kind of stuff you did when you were working. Uh, but uh, there is a technical section to the interview which mm-hmm. is like written paper back in my time, I did this in 2019. So at that time they had like a paper, which you had to write the answers to They, they mm-hmm. had questions on math and computer science and like a few things. So you had to write the answers and everything. But other than that part, the conversation with the admission director, it was uh, fairly non-technical and uh, it was based on your experiences. And how would you describe uh, the MIT culture? Because, you know, usually during these interviews, they test for, for your match or whether you will suit, you know, the, the culture of the school. How would you describe it? Uh, so the culture is fairly uh, collaborative, number one. So I think uh, what I found at MIT was you need, to, you need to be excellent at subject matter. So whatever you are studying, you need to be very good at uh, that particular subject matter. You need to gel well with your colleagues. You need to do a lot of projects. So in general, if you're someone who can contribute as part of a team, who can uh, develop expertise in subject matter, if that is something that appeals to you, then uh, you'd find a lot of good opportunities at MIT. And what did you highlight uh, in your application regarding your profile, apart from all the academic achievements? Uh, so apart from the academic achievements, I uh, focused on my work experience. So I had a relevant work experience. I worked for a hedge fund in a finance role, and uh, I did highlight that uh, to the admission committee. I also highlighted a few of my extracurriculars, which uh, uh, so one of my extracurriculars that uh, I pursued was uh, aircraft flying. And uh, that is something which is not done by a lot of people. So I made sure I put that in the application, uh, which uh, that would help my profile stand out. Uh, other than that, I relied on some of my um, academic papers. So I had some papers published uh, hmm. back when I was an undergrad. So I also focused on them. So all in all, I just made sure I put forth uh, all of my uh, all of the things that I have done in front of the committee, and then it's uh, up to them to make a decision. Very interesting. And students often ask themselves if they want to wait for a few years to apply to an MBA or if they should just go ahead and apply to a specialized master's right after college. 
How did you answer this question for yourself and what factors should one consider while making this decision? So uh, MBA and a specialized master's, it's, uh, they're, they're kind of different. So uh, you should apply for a master's in finance or a master's in business analytics, any of these programs, only if you want to go into the technical field of finance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and an MBA would not direct you into these kind of roles. An MBA would direct you into managerial roles, which are different. So the kind of opportunities you'd have after MBA and after MFIN are a little different. So if you're interested in the technical aspects of finance, I would encourage uh, you to apply for uh, the MFIN program. If you are more interested in managing people and in uh, building team, maybe going for a product manager kind of role, then an MBA would be better suited for you. Could you elaborate what you mean by technical? Um, from from my general knowledge, uh, an MBA would be for IB, for M&A, which is a client-facing job and requires a lot of, apart from the technical skills, a lot of people skills because you build rapport with the client. What do you mean by more technical roles? So uh, number one, MFIN is not very restrictive. So I have colleagues who have gone into... Uh, front desk IB roles at uh, pretty large investment banks, even after completing MFIN. But uh, for example, the firm that I work uh, for, Citadel, so they, uh, I do not find a lot of MBAs uh, as part of my cohort. Mm -hmm. They focus on, so what we do is we build algo trading strategies, we build trading strategies for uh, trading in the market. And uh, this requires a very in-depth knowledge of finance and how the markets work. Uh, mm-hmm. And for these kind of roles, they generally prefer people with a technical background. Technical background includes uh, if you've studied engineering, if you've studied economics, if you've studied finance and uh, masters. So these are the these are the kind of things that uh, are better suited for uh, uh, for a masters in finance or a masters in business analytics, as compared to an MBA, which uh, uh, in which you go into roles which uh, where you'll be leading people. Maybe you'll be leading being a team or something like that. I have not done any MBA, so I cannot comment more on that. But uh, most of the infants go into hedge funds or into consulting roles, uh, into more specialized technical uh, and niche roles is my understanding. And do you get the opportunity during your program to apply these technical skills? Oh uh, Yeah, so definitely. So during the program, uh, we have a lot of projects, we have a lot of courses, and uh, depending on your uh, liking and your personal interest, you can make the program extremely technical by taking a lot of technical courses and projects. Or uh, if you are uh, looking to get into like different kind of roles, maybe M&A roles or something like that, then you can choose to uh, take more non-technical courses. So it's pretty much up to you. But... Uh, as compared to an MBA, uh, M tends to be a little more uh, technical and uh, sophisticated, I would say. Mm-hmm. And how was your experience at MIT? Uh, so what were some of the key highlights of your experience in addition to academics? Maybe the student life, maybe, uh, I don't know, the conferences or the events organized by clubs. Could you tell us more about the MIT experience? Uh, sure. So, uh, so de- definitely, I was staying at the graduate housing at MIT, and uh, we used to have a lot of events. We used to, like the entire cohort, used to meet very frequently, and we used to do a lot of informal events like that. Uh, I also had the opportunity to uh, learn a lot of, uh, uh, like, engage with some sports. I learned sailing when I was at MIT. Uh, unfortunately, uh, by the end of my program in my uh, third semester. Uh, uh, COVID struck and uh, everything became online. So, I, uh, so that was a part of the program that I was not completely able to uh, uh, experience. But uh, at least the first half of the program, that was pretty nice. Uh, we had a lot of events. We uh, we went for uh, like dinners and uh, like get togethers. And like I mentioned, I also learned uh, this new sport. So uh, uh, but uh, a lot of my experience was cut down because of COVID. I would expect that people would apply right now and maybe start next year. Uh, they would have a more fulfilling experience because they would not uh, be blocked uh, because of uh, this pandemic. Mm-hmm. 
And MIT is actually very well known for its entrepreneurship ecosystem. Tell us more about any opportunities that you explored at MIT. So I uh, I did uh, speak to a lot of people and I uh, tried to get into the entrepreneurship space at MIT. Uh, but as I mentioned, uh, like in the second half of uh, my program, uh, since all the on-campus activities uh, were cancelled because of COVID, uh, I could not uh, get into it more deeply. So, but still, I was able to speak to a lot of people, learn about a lot of things that people are doing. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I, I would say that the opportunities are great and going forward once, once there is no COVID and once people actually come onto campus and, uh, they're able to, um, uh, they're able to like, uh, be there in person, I'm sure uh, they can explore a lot more uh, entrepreneurship opportunities. How did you go about your job search? And if you could tell us more about the OPT system in the US and if pursuing a STEM classified program made it easier for you to secure a full-time opportunity? Sure. So uh, job search, uh, so you come into the program in July. The first semester is the summer semester. So job search pretty much starts at the end of your summer semester. You need to make sure you have your resume you need to have a list of companies that you'll be applying to. And uh, you prepare for the interviews, you uh, read all the appropriate questions, you learn about all the technical things, and then you go ahead and apply with your resume. And uh, you need to apply to a lot of places. Uh, and uh, like uh, you'll get a lot of rejections and some of the places you'll get interviews and then you go and give the interviews. And depending on how the interviews go, you are either uh, offered a position or you're rejected. So this is the typical way in which things go. So you apply with your resume, uh, then uh, either you're shortlisted or not. If you're shortlisted, then you're called for a phone interview. Mm -hmm. If the phone interview is successful, then you're called for an in-person interview at their office. And if that is successful, then they offer you a job position. Uh, about the OPT uh, system, so definitely uh, having the STEM classification definitely helped because that gives you uh, three years as compared to one year uh, of uh, work time in US. And uh, I have a feeling that companies do tend to value that a little bit. Okay, uh, thank you very much for sharing your experience with us. And now I would actually like to ask you, what advice would you give to students looking to pursue their masters in the US and more specifically at MIT? Sure. So uh, the first thing I would advise is uh, like you should know what you're going for. So you should have a very brief idea that this is what I want to do after my master's. This is the kind of uh, these are the kind of courses that I want to pursue during my master's. That would uh, really help you optimize for things. So once you come uh, once you come here, you can actually go ahead and take the appropriate courses. You can uh, pursue the appropriate activities which would. Uh, help you after your uh, program. So a lot of my peers, like you mentioned entrepreneurship, they had it very clear that they want to pursue entrepreneurship after completing the program. So as soon as they came in, they joined all the entrepreneurship activities. Mm -hmm. Some of them were very clear that they want to join consulting companies. Then that is how they structured their program. So I was fairly clear that I want to go into a hedge fund. Mm -hmm. So that really helps. Now, obviously, you don't need to know exactly what you're going to do. But if you have some idea, then it would definitely help you. And uh, to that end, I would uh, suggest them to have some amount of work experience before coming to master's, especially if they're coming from outside the US. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that would, number one, uh, help them understand how uh, the job market goes. And number two, it would also uh, give their profile a little more bearing when they're actually going ahead and searching for a job. So, yeah, but other than that, you should like come here, you should uh, enjoy your time and uh, make sure you uh, make the most out of it. Thank you very much, Sanat, for sharing all your um, experience with us. And we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you.